All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to do something really cool. I wanna find the volume of a solid obtained by crossing two cylinders. So it's cool because it's kind of impossible to visualize that way, except for computer graphics, but still using multivariable, we can sort of easily find the answer. So let's do it. So find the volume of the solid obtained by intersecting two cylinders cylinders so the following one x squared plus y squared equals to 1 and x squared plus z squared equals to 1 and so first of all let me draw a picture again as is usual in multivariable so we have x y and z On the one hand, so x squared plus y squared equals to 1, this doesn't depend on z. And whenever something doesn't depend on z, you can just translate it in the z direction. So it's like the circle x squared plus y squared equals to 1, but in the z direction. So again, it's in the z direction. On the other hand, x squared plus z squared equals to 1, it doesn't depend on y. So you can basically translate it in the y direction. So maybe this cylinder. No, no. Right, this color is not true. Blue. So I'm feeling blue, da -bit -dee -da -bit -dee. Okay. So that becomes x squared plus z squared equals to 1. And again, the intersection is uh, so hard. It, I can't even draw it, but think of something like this. It's what's called the Steinmetz solid. Yeah. Again, I think I put a thumb thumbnail on this on the beginning. But here's the cool thing. Even though uh, you can't, you know, it's very hard to visualize this, we can even, we can still calculate the volume of this using math. And just a disclaimer, okay, it's, you could do this using single variable calculus, even without calculus. And I think Aristotle did this without calculus because he's that smart, okay? But what's nice about multivariable calculus is that it puts it into a more systematic framework. It's actually easier to do using multivariable calculus and it takes less thinking if you want, because we're not Aristotle, okay? So, in multivariable, there's an easy way of finding a volume. It's just a triple integral of the function y. So volume is triple integral over e of the function y, dx, dy, dz. So what is E? It's just this solid. And here dx, dy, dz, I, I can interchange them. That's, I, I just write it interchangeably. Okay. And first of all, let's figure out the z's. So z, it's always between bigger and smaller functions. So our z is always trapped between the bigger and the smaller function, which, let's see what this becomes. So this is our z, and this becomes a bigger function, and this is a smaller function. Well, as I said, you don't even need the picture, but... Let's look at those two equations we have. x squared plus y squared equals to 1, and x squared plus z squared equals to 1. Luckily, there's just one equation that depends on z, this one, and we can actually solve this. So x squared plus z squared equals to 1. That gives us z 
squared is 1 minus x squared, and that gives us z equals to plus or minus square root of 1 minus x squared. What does that tell us? It tells us that this bigger function has to be square root of 1 minus x squared, and the smaller function has to be minus square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's the first thing. I'll need that picture, unfortunately, so let's just write that here. z is between one minus, square root of 1 minus x squared and minus square root of 1 minus x squared. And we'll need it in a second to do the integration. All right, the second thing is to find x and y, and for this we need the shadow business again, so that d be the shadow under your solid e. So in this case, if you visualize the solid, there is some shadow underneath it. Like here, I know it becomes uh, possible to read, but this is your shadow here, and maybe, uh, let me give you a visualization of what that shadow is. Suppose, and I mean class I did it with toilet paper, but I don't know if people understood it, but, so suppose this is my arm, which is the cylinder here, the blue one, and you look at this cylinder using this red cylinder. Then tell me what you see. Hopefully all you see is just a, a disc. Or if you want, if you have your bird that looks through this hole here, if you look at this blue cylinder, you should also see a disc. And now I guess I can erase the picture. So what this is, D, D is a shadow under E, and it's a disc of radius Or in other words, just use the other equation of the, uh, of the cylinder. So in other words, in the xy plane, the d is just x squared plus y squared equals to 1. And technically, mathematically, what you do, you take this other cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals to 1, and you just set z equals to 0 and you get x squared plus y squared equals to 1. And now here comes the interesting thing. Usually, when you see x squared plus y squared, you use polar coordinates. This is one of the rare instances where polar coordinates makes it too difficult. It's actually easier to just evaluate it directly. And so, to evaluate it directly, we need y between two things. So y is between, between bigger and smaller. Smaller. And in particular, if you solve for this, you get y is plus or minus square root of 1 minus x squared. So the bigger function is square root of 1 minus x squared. And the smaller one is minus square root of 1 minus x squared. And so, just let me write this here, y is between square root of 1 minus x squared and minus square root of 1 minus x squared. Which gives us our second inequality. And lastly, we just need to figure out x. But look, x is just between minus 1 and 1. 1 and minus 1. The outer one only has to ask constant, so very good. In other words, this thing was impossible to visualize. We're still able to write them in terms of equations. Here they are, and once we have that, we can just evaluate the integral. So let me keep our equations and erase everything else. So I guess last step, the volume. Uh, 
Again, volume is a triple integral over e of 1 dx dy dz. And now we do want to respect the order. And it sounds like an Illuminati thing of saying, you know, respect the order. Ooh, pain is suffering or something. Anyway, <laughs> minus square root of 1 minus x squared and square root of 1 minus x squared, 1. So first we do the z. So I can respect the order. And then we do the y. So it's the same bounds. 1 minus x squared squared of 1 minus x squared dy. And lastly, we do the x's. So integral from 1 minus 1 to 1 of dx. So now we've encoded the bounds, so we don't need this thing anymore. All right, and then all you have to do is to calculate this, and I promise you it's really not that bad. So it's integral from minus 1 to 1, integral from minus 1 minus x squared, square root of 1 minus x squared. And then, so integral of 1, I'd like to remind you, from a to b, it shows b minus a. So it's this minus this, we becomes 2 times 1 square root of 1 minus x squared dy dx. And the nice thing is, this becomes a constant with respect to y. And also I'd like to remind you, integral from a to b of a constant is constant times b minus a. So this becomes integral from 1 to 1 of the constant, which is 2 times square root of 1 minus x squared, times this minus this, which becomes another 2 times square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And look, this really complicated volume actually has a nice integral. 4 times 1 minus x squared, and yes, a single variable calculus student can do this now, but if you want, you can use evenness and write it as 2 times the integral from 0 to 1, but if you calculate it in the end, you get 16 thirds. So, this weird object, which we couldn't even visualize, has volume 16 thirds. And we did this using multivariable calculus and systematic multivariable calculus. It's not too crazy of a problem. We still did z is between bigger and smaller. We looked at the shadow, y is between bigger and smaller, and then x is between two constants, and we have evaluated that integral. And I know you could do it just using slices, because notice some slices are squares, and then you do get this formula in the end, but I like this, this has less thinking, you know, something you don't want to think. <laughs> All right, so if you like that and you want to see more multivariable calculus, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.